Hello there, welcome back to World of Warship Legends with Durka, where today we have a new look at the Colbert after around eight months. We finally get our hands on her again. She is the legendary French version of the Atlanta, and man is she fast. Let's go check her out. Real quick, let's take a look at the match. Warrior's Path, one of those maps that I, I don't really like but I am gonna take full advantage of all of this wonderful open water over here and move out on this flank. Colbert definitely has a need for speed and she does really well in open water fighting roles. The game in the background, it's a high damage heartbreaker, but it's also kind of my fault. So I'll happily let you guys learn from my mistake and show you at the end how I probably screwed the pooch for my team. So like mentioned, I play Colbert as a full agile cruiser. She is very fast and has a small turning circle, the best two ingredients to make a good agility build. We are using aiming systems, double rudder and MBM three. One, the ship is fast, pretty agile to start off with. So Andrew Rue is going to be the guy. Blank speed, velocious, rudder, all the mobility perks, and we're using Muller and Baltimore to make it even more agile. The results are pretty impressive, 2.6 second rudder shift and around 37 knots top speed. And that's not taking into account the French speed boost, of which you get three of them, they last three minutes, and it's no ordinary 8% speed boost, nay my friends, 20%. So throw that on there with the speed flag, and Colbert is zipping around 45 knots. It's a very hard target to hit. <laughs> Just watch uh, the uh, poor Reds try to hit me. So this video, I want to help you guys try to answer if it's worth spending the 3000 steel to get a jump start and to get the ship a little earlier than the others. The reason Wargaming is doing this, I think for more testing purposes, I, I guess they didn't have long enough uh, from December to nearly August, but they don't want it out there in droves. They kind of want to see how she performs in the hands of others. Again, I thought that was what the rental period for was for. But if you want to get her, you would have to go to the forge, spend 3000 steel. That's going to put her in your bureau. And then you can research her like normal. Any other legendary bureau ship. You have one month to make this decision. So on that note, let's look at a couple stats and compare her to the other legendary cruisers. Health points, she's going to fall behind the Wusta and the Minotaur, 36,000. It's going to have more than the Smolensk, though, from looking at the PC version of the game. She's not here yet, but I think she will be eventually. On the notes of her survivability, her armor is, uh, could we say, cracked? <laughs> A 32 millimeter bow can bounce everything but yammy guns. Um... The guns are very flimsy, they get knocked out quite easily. The Citadel is also above the waterline, so you can't exactly get away with the murder, but I will say the armor scheme on this is pretty good, and uh, I, I think it's a little too good to be honest, but yeah. You get three base heals as well, and with my agility build, you get a fourth one. Not bad. 5,000 health apiece. The guns, you have 16 127 millimeter guns. These are destroyer guns like found on the Fletcher or the Atlanta. They are slow and floaty shells if you haven't noticed by now. The Atlanta shell velocity is just a little bit slower than Colbert's 792 meters per second. Colbert's is 808, uh, but it's still slow and you're gonna have a hard time hitting targets at range, especially small targets. Um, Yeah, if, if the player is being agile themselves dodging you know they have thumbs using their rudder then it can be very hard to hit them but what i would say while it is cheap i would absolutely take advantage of the auto aim feature in world of warship legends especially when targeting a ship that is uh, actively maneuvering i feel like it's kind of this unspoken thing in legends you know i'll <laughs> i'll go watch the pc players play which i still frequently watch and i watch them aim and i think wow all these players are so much better than us because we use auto aim <laughs> uh, simply using lt to to zoom in you can kind of get course corrections and make easy aiming adjustments in our console version of the game so keep an eye a little bit later like when i'm shooting the wusta or the martel how i kind of abuse this feature to hit more shots 
All right, the reload. <laughs> 3.1 seconds on this build. That is the fastest legendary cruiser. And just look at these prospective damage numbers. They're quite insane. Highest in the game, as a matter of fact. Now, of course, there's a caveat that goes along with this. It's kind of like Atlanta and her insane DPM numbers. Just remember, these are 127 millimeter guns. A typical light cruiser has 152 millimeter guns, a whole inch bigger. Uh, that means you're going to have more shatters than you can shake a baguette at. This game in the background ends with over 700 target hits, but I would be curious how many shatters that is. There is no IFHE perk for these French commanders as of yet. I don't know if there ever will be. That's a very good question that I just kind of thought of. Um, if you could get IFHE on these French commanders, that would be a must, a definite must. Um, yeah. Anyways, lots of shatters. The AP can be pretty good if someone gives you broadside. Their penetration values, of course, they aren't very good. Again, picture a Fletcher, you know, facing off against a battleship. Unless they're straight broadside, you're probably not going to pin much unless you're very close or aiming at the superstructure, but you can use it for sure. I think we get a pretty decent couple salvos on a Yamato later this game. Keep an eye out for that. The AA is actually just okay. We're just surprising with these dual purpose guns. Every gun on here was designed to also shoot at aircraft. I think that was the purpose of Colbert and why she was built for the French Navy. In the game, however, it doesn't translate to the best. Uh, the DPS is 381. That is nearly the worst for legendary tier cruisers, surprisingly. Concealment. Also not the best with the Agile build. You could, of course, put Concealment Module on there, be a little more sneaky if you were so inclined, but me, personally, I'm just a fast-moving flamethrower and I never let off the trigger, so I'd rather have more agility perks than Concealment. Well, that is how she stacks up to the other Bureau Cruisers. I'm kind of hesitant to talk more about the other cruisers right now because they get buffed and nerfed often enough and they change. I mean, think about the Wooster. The last time Colbert was in the game, the Wooster was a turd. It was largely considered the worst legendary tier ship until she got buffed. And it was a huge buff. And now Wooster is an exceptional cruiser and very, very scary, probably a little overcooked. And of course, there's the Minotaur. She is still insane with her AP, DPM, and crazy torpedo armament. At this point, I wouldn't feel okay calling any one of these light cruisers better than the other because of how different they all are. It's really like comparing apples to oranges. But what I will say about the Colbert is that she scratches a different kind of itch than those other cruisers. She's stupid fast and very agile. So quite a bit different than especially the Minotaur. I'm sorry, especially the Wooster. The Minotaur, you can do some uh, agility builds on her and with her British propulsion and tight turning circle, she can be pretty good. But the Colbert is definitely better with the higher top speed. If you have a thing for full agility cruisers right now, this is at the top of the food chain. The 3000 steel investment just might be worth it for you. I'll admit it's a fun play style, that's for sure. And as this game goes on, I think we can start to see the benefits of having a ship like this on your flank. Uh, every time one of these Bismarcks fires at me and they are getting some hits in to their credit, um, that's 20 seconds or so that they're not shooting at someone else. And the same goes for the Wusta or the Martell. When they were shooting at me, you know, that's time that they're not burning down all of these battleships that are lined up over here like they're in Pearl Harbor and Battleship Row. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a thing in the game. Damage tanking with agility cruisers. I think it is absolutely viable. And at the same time, we're dealing out a lot of punishment and these guys are definitely not pushing this flank right now, that's for sure. If I weren't here, maybe they would have, maybe they would have got the cap. I guess I wonder, now knowing that I lost this game, could I have been doing something more effective to win? And I really don't think so. I think holding off this flank as our team, we had A and B for most of the game. Now they're kind of falling and faltering, and I should probably be heading that direction. But, uh... Yeah, I feel like I played a decent game until I didn't, <laughs> and I'll happily point that out to you here pretty soon.
Well, Bear doesn't have to be a kiting ship. That just happened to be the gameplay example here and how this game turned out. You can absolutely push, remember, 32 millimeter bow. And I love that play style as well. It can help you get destroyers out of the match. Just here, there was way too much heat for me to run right up into the middle of four ships and be that aggressive, but I would say playing caps around islands, if you're able to get close enough to a destroyer, they're toast. You can imagine what a broadside of 12 of these guns does, and if you can't, let me tell you, on this build, an HE Alpha Salvo is over 26,000 if all of your shells connected and nothing shattered. Goodbye, destroyers. You don't have radar. That's a huge detriment. And the sonar is just meh. 4.4 ship detection range. Uh, so destroyers are not the easiest to deal with as maybe some of the other cruisers like a radar Minotaur or the Wooster Alaska. But anyways, you can still be effective against destroyers. That's for sure. So 3v3 and we are headed back to the middle of the map. And we're going to garner some hate mail from some salty Bismarck captains. <laughs> but I would ask you a question. How much do you want the USS Missouri? The Tier 7 Iowa class battleship with radar that is currently now in the forge. As of now, that's really the only steel ship that seems worth it for me, to me, in my eyes. And it costs 30,000 steel. Now, me personally, I'm at 16,000. Barely halfway on my way to the Mighty Mo, and I've been playing this game an awful lot, so uh, I doubt that I will ever get her, and it just goes to show how much 3,000 steel is actually worth in this game. That is a lot of arena time, that is a lot of ranked seasons and salty tears. Is it worth it? Hmm. Would there be something else newer and shinier coming along instead of the Missouri? I'm only sure. Um... There is also the Murmansk that gets overlooked a lot. That is a tier 4 Soviet cruiser, basically a Marblehead or a uh, Omaha with less guns, but she is very agile. So there's that. I think she costs about four or 5,000 steel. I can't exactly remember. Um, there are the ice camos that are cool for the Edinburgh Scharnhorst and the Duke of York, I believe. But for me, they're not worth seven or 5,000 steel. So don't really waste your effort there, I would say. So yeah, if you can answer that question, then that might tell you if it's worth going ahead and purchasing this Bureau project, and still you're going to have to go through the Bureau, which is, what, two to three months if you're really grinding it out? Right now, with the addition of Tier 8, I would say it might be best just to grind some Tier 7s for credits, grind the Tier 8s, get to test out the new high tier. Uh, that would be better time spent right now instead of playing a legendary tier cruiser which as we know doesn't really make you a lot of silver even if you are having magnificent games tier 7 is where it is at for earning credits i will say though <laughs> for those of you who just like to see the world burn you could go ahead get the cold bearer and use her to murder freshly purchased tier 8s that haven't been upgraded yet they are out there in droves right now, so if you're into that sort of thing, this could absolutely be almost like a uh, top-tier seal clubber. Go for it. Colbert has a lot going for her. 32mm bow, 45 knots top speed, and the highest HE, well, and AP DPM in the entire game. I think this is a very, very, very strong ship. But no matter how strong the ship is, you have to understand how to win games, Durka. And uh, right now, the enemy red team, they have two caps. I'm trying to skirt around this island here. I know that I can finish the Yamato off. And when I do, we're going to get a point swing, and that should put us in the lead. And we should win. So I thought. <laughs> but the bad thing about that is because they have two caps they are going to earn more points than us and uh, it's going to be enough in 55 seconds to put them over the top and again that is something right now that i'm not focused on i think sometimes you know you have a big game or you're you feel like you're fighting for your life the whole game and it's a close one it's, maybe your faculties aren't there and you're not really thinking clearly and at this point i wasn't paying enough attention to the red team points slowly ticking past our points as I tell my teammate to get back because I didn't want him to die. And uh, in reality, 
that lost us the game. I should have sailed directly into B cap, stopped them from accruing some points, and it's possible if I would have made it there just in time that we would have still won. So, take it from a CC that just lost his team the game. Always keep an eye on those points and on the caps. Well, guys, that's a GG. I would appreciate it if you smash that like button. It would help me out a lot. Let me know in the comment section down below if you're thinking of getting Colbert, if you've got your eyes on some tier eights or other things. There's a lot going on in the game right now, so I would totally understand if your uh, attention's divided. With that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.